Ron Scott here. Today I'm going to show you how to do a simple 3D trick with 2D images, all within Vegas Pro without using an external program. Start a new project in Vegas Pro, and then press Ctrl Shift Q twice to create two tracks on your timeline, and then drop the same still image onto both tracks. On the top track, click the Event Pan Crop icon to open the Event Pan Crop dialog for that track. And once you're in the Event Pan Crop dialog, make sure that your cursor on your timeline is all the way at the beginning of your event. Then click on Mask and click on the Enable Mask button. And then go up to the top left and up there you'll see the Anchor Creation Tool. Click on that and that gives you your Anchor Creation Tool. Now you need to begin drawing your Bezier curve around the part of the image that you want to pop out. In this case, that's me. And if you want to be a little more accurate about it, you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in like that. And just keep on going around. You don't have to be terribly accurate. And just continue on until you've drawn your Bezier all the way around the subject or the part of the image that you want to pop out from the background. When you get back close to the first point that you drew, you need to close your Bezier curve, and to do that, just click on the first point, and that creates your mask. Optionally, you can right-click and select Close Path from the pop-up. So again, there you have your Bezier path drawn all around the part that you want to pop out. Now let's make our pan crop dialog a little bit smaller so we can see our preview window. Click on the Position track down at the bottom left of the dialog, and that'll show you your sizing marquee. And then move your cursor down to the very end of the event. And then go up to your sizing marquee and make it a little bit smaller, which will cause the cropped out area to zoom in and adjust its position until you get uh, exactly the effect that you want. You'll notice now that if you play that event, you'll see the zoom in happen on the preview screen. And there you have it. It's that simple. For this example, we're going to start with just one still image on the top track. I'll explain that in a bit. But first, we need to create our Bezier mask. So back in your event pan crop dialog, make sure that your event timeline cursor is all the way at the beginning of the event, either by dragging it or clicking on this little button down there. Click on Mask, and then click on the Mask Enable button. Up in your upper left hand corner, click on the Anchor Creation Tool. Now you're ready to start drawing your Bezier curve. I'm going to zoom in a little bit using my mouse wheel and start clicking and dragging to draw your Bezier curve. One of the tricks to creating good Bezier curves is to click and drag in the valleys or peaks around the edge of the thing that you're trying to outline. Click and drag, and that will create a nice smooth curve. If you just want a straight line, you can just click without dragging. But generally, I like to create nice smooth curves around things. Now I'm going to zoom in, but oops, I've lost the end of my Bezier curve. So hold down the control key until you get the mover hand and scoot back over this way like that. Now you can start drawing again. The mistake I used to make was I'd start drawing again. And unfortunately, what would happen would be I would start a new Bezier curve that was not connected to the original curve. And there's no easy way to connect those two that I've ever found. So what you need to do is right click and then select Select Path and then hit the Delete key. Now you can start drawing this path again, but you have to tell the program that you want to start drawing on this Bezier path. So get that little pointy tool, click on the very end, and now as you click and drag, you'll be drawing that same Bezier path. What you want to do is continue all the way around until you encompass the entire item that you want to crop out. And again, remember, if you do use the mover hand to move around, you've got to tell the program that that's the curve that you want to continue to draw. And then when you get all the way back around, you need to close your path. You can either click on the first point that you drew, or you can right click and select Close Path from the pop-up menu. And there you have it. We've got our completed Bezier curve, and that creates our mask. Now that we have our mask in place, Let's add some animation, first to the background, and then to the banana bread. 
I'm going to disable the mask for a moment so that we can see the full image in the preview window. I'm going to click on position. That will enable our pan crop marquee. I'm going to zoom in on the coffee cup up at the top left. That's going to be the starting position for our zoom out. I'm going to click about midway down in the track. I'm going to go up and right click on restore and match output aspect. So now let's see what that does for us. We'll start zoomed in on the coffee cup and we'll come right back out to there. Now let's close that dialog for a moment. You'll notice that we have only one image on the top track. Let's right click on that and say copy and we'll go down to the track just below it and say paste. This ensures that both tracks have the same pan zoom motion and that the banana bread is in the same position on the top track as the bottom track when we go to zoom in on it. Now we go back to the top track, go back into the event pan crop dialog and make sure we're right at that very spot where we're going to pop the bread out. Now we need to go down on the mask track, re-enable the mask and add a keyframe right there. Then we need to back up exactly one frame and add another keyframe. Click on the mask itself and go up under Path, Mode, and click Disabled. We need to do this. That way the mask comes in just at the right moment that we need it and not before. And for this to work correctly, we need to go to the very first keyframe and do the same thing by disabling it. Mode and Disabled. We go back to the position track. We're going to scoot down about halfway towards the end there. And we're going to zoom in. And you'll see in the preview window that that makes the bread appear to pop out from the image. Just like that. Okay, so let's take a look at that and see how that looks. Here we go. And the bread pops out. Now you'll notice that that doesn't look very interesting. That's, it's kind of flat. Okay, the bread just sort of seems to be floating in midair. So let's make it look a little more realistic. So what we'll do is we'll go back and make sure we're at the very beginning of where the bread pops out. This is important. Be right there. Now we'll go up to our plug-in chain of effects and click on Sony Layer Dimensionality. Add that and say OK. Now what we want to add is the shadow. So we're going to click on Shadow. The type is going to be Drop. And we're going to have to animate the height and the blur. So we're going to take both of those, click on the animate buttons there, and set those to zero. I like the opac opacity of the shadow to be about halfway, so we see a little bit of the back background coming through. Now let's move on down, and you'll notice as our bread pops out, right about there, we want to get right to where the bread just stops. And now we want to increase our height of our shadow, bring it out a little bit like that. And of course, add some blur to make it look a little more realistic, like that. There you go. Now let's take a look at that. See how that works. We zoom out, and our bread starts to pop out, and we get a little bit of a drop shadow behind it. So that makes it look really pretty cool, I think. Take another look at it one more time. And there you have it. In this example, we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to make it appear as though the bike rider is moving away from the camera. Once again, you want to put the same image on two tracks, one on top of each other. On the top track, in the event pan crop dialog, go ahead and create your Bezier mask just like we did in the previous examples. Again, this time you want to outline the bike rider. Click on the position track once you have your mask created. And zoom in just a little bit on the back of the bike rider like that. Then move down in your track, right about two-thirds of the way down, three seconds about here, and go ahead and zoom back out. Now what that's going to do is that's going to make it appear as though the bike rider is moving away from us. Now to add a little more interest, we're going to add a little motion to the background track. In the bottom track, click the Event Pan Crop icon to bring up the Event Pan Crop dialog. Put your cursor right back at the beginning of the track and zoom in just a little bit using your marquee, but not as much as you did on the bike rider. And then go back to that three second mark and zoom back out like that. 
And now let's see what that effect is. Now both the bike rider and the background appear to move away from the camera, but they're not in exact sync with each other, which adds a little more interest to the animation. At the beginning of this tutorial, I said that you could accomplish all these effects entirely within Vegas Pro. However, if you're willing to do a little work with a cloning brush in an image editing program, you can enhance your options for the effect. By cloning the background so that it covers more or all of the subject, you can increase your zoom or pan range. I've placed the original image on the top track and drawn the Bezier mask as in the previous example. On the bottom track is the same image with the background cloned in to cover more of the bike rider. Using the modified background image, we can zoom in or out a bit more without revealing a duplicate rider. I'm Ron Scott. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if so, please like and share.